Leonardo Energy, the web community of sustainable energy professionals, presents interviews with concentration photovoltaics industry representatives. What are the main technical features of your CPV products? So we are using a, a very simple, straightforward approach. That means we are using a Fresnel lens or an array of Fresnel lenses with uh, very small solar cells. The, the diameter of the cell is only 2.3 millimeter. And uh, the, the specific of our technology is that it's very straightforward, very simple optical approach. And that's also one of the reasons why we reach uh, module efficiencies of up to 25%. Vicente Diaz, Isophoton. Our CPV technology has been developed with taking into account mainly two things. The first one, to make a competitive product in terms of cost and very reliable. And secondly, to have, uh, let's say, the open door to enough potential for improving the efficiency as well as the cost. Uh, going to the details, uh, the optics of the system that we have shown uh, is able to work with the total internal reflection phenomena as well as with the refraction. That means that we are able to make very compact CPV modules allowing a high degree of automatization. Nancy Hartsock, Soul Focus. Soul Focus in our CPV technology, we utilize a reflective non imaging optical system which uses two mirrors, a primary mirror which is used to collect the sun which then reflects to the secondary mirror and down to the optical rod to the solar cell. Um, there are the other common use technology is for now lenses. Uh, we've elected to use the non-imaging optical approach with mirrors. Uh, we believe that the mirrors in the field and the glass optics will have long-term durability and uh, will offer the highest efficiency in the long run in terms of reduced losses uh, from the optics. Uh, we also uh, have a fully enclosed system so all of our optics and our cells are enclosed behind glass so that the glass can protect them from environmental damage. It protects uh, things from being in direct contact so you've got a better safety issue. What are the challenges for CPV development? So as a new technology we have a lot of challenges. One of the first is the cell. Is the, cell. the cell is really working with this high concentration. So that is already proven by the Instituto de Energia Solar in, in Madrid, in Spain, or by the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, or by the NREL in USA. So we know, we know today that the, the efficiency is proven. About the technology of the cell, it's also almost solved because we can use the same technology for the, that for the LED system, and the LED system is a very well-known system. And there are new challenges that need to be solved, like the standards, like the equipment to measure, because there isn't any equipment, uh, there isn't any new standard for the measurement, and it's focused also working in that. And also about the direct radiation, because we use only the direct radiation, but there isn't any, da any data. And all this work we need to, to develop in, in the ISFOC. How will ISFOC help the CPV industry? Uh, well, ISFOC is already helping the, the, this very early stage of growth of the CPV industry. Uh, it is being done uh, mainly through our involvement in reliability tests and definition of standards, through current installations, which are the first one in the world at this scale, and through the dissemination of the technology at international level. In the mid-term, uh, ISFOC will help as a test bed. Uh, for the very first pilot power plants of the various technologies and demonstrating that CPV business uh, model is competitive and can become a segment within the PV uh, business. The long term is focused uh, in the continuous improvement of the technology and maintaining collaboration with all key players, players in the industry and uh, through training and collaboration with uh, R&D institutes and uh, universities. Well, ISFOC is really a very important project for us because uh, it's the first time that uh, CPV uh, with this kind of 3.5 uh, high efficiency solar cells are installed in the world in a large uh, installation and it's, it's very it's great for us to, to be there and to be part of that. So that it was an international uh, call for tender and we were one of the three companies who, who got a contract in the, first, uh, in the first call 
and this was very very good for us and this will be a showcase for CPV and, and we will be able to, to show to the banks, to the clients that it's there, it works, it's installed and uh, it's, it's doing pretty well. What are the price expectations for the close future? Well, predicting a, a future for a CPV in a PV market that is uh, growing so rapidly all around the world and with so many changes in difficult, is difficult. But the future looks promising for CPV. Uh, it is to become a very competitive technology and will, will quickly bring quality and reliable products into the market. Uh, predictions of less than three uh, euro per watt at system level are likely to become available by 2010. Uh, and this will bring local so solar electricity prices uh, closer to the 0.1 or 10 cent euro cent per kilowatt hour target. Uh, government policies, administrative procedures and energy market will drive this uh, growth of the CPV offer. What are the market development expectations for the near future? Okay, if, if we look at uh, Europe first, the European directive of having 20% of all energy coming from renewable energies by 2020 uh, gives us a great opportunity because all the governments are focused in supporting renewable energies. Uh, this results in uh, good tariff uh, uh, values for the investors in such a way that the business model comes out correctly and as tariffs go down in parallel with our costs going down, eventually uh, our intention is that our, our technology should be competitive with, uh, with the uh, fossil fuel uh, generation of electricity. When we uh, look at the rest of the world, uh, the rest of the world is starting to follow the models that Europe put in place. Europe clearly led in terms of what needed to be done with renewables as a whole and countries around the world now are starting to adopt similar things to the 20 percent renewables by 2020. Uh, our, our next market, uh, the United States, will probably be coming on stream about two years after uh, Europe in terms of deployments of concentrated technology. Um, we're seeing a lot of activity out of the Middle East. Middle East and North Africa are perfect climates for this type of technology and Australia is a big market. So we're going to see deployments across the board. Uh, a lot of companies I think are, that are going to deploy in the countries where they create the technology first and then expand. Uh, we were kind of a little different and then we decided to deploy in Europe first. Uh, but they, the, by, by 2010, 2012, this will be clearly a worldwide deployed technology in the sunny parts of the world. End of part two.